this is the Avionics Intelligence Report, and I'm John McHale. Persistent surveillance via lighter-than-air vehicles is our topic this week. According to Major Robert Rugg at the Army Program Manager Robotic and Unmanned Systems Office at the Aberdeen Proving Ground in Maryland, persistent surveillance is around-the-clock, 24-7 monitoring for an extended period of time, monitoring that is in stark contrast to that provided by aircraft, which have surveillance time limitations dictated by fuel consumption and capacity. Anybody who watches the Super Bowl and other major sporting events is familiar with persistent surveillance. It's carried out by the Goodyear blimp and other similar aircraft. The military is using blimps for this concept as well, although they won't be doing close-ups of fumble recoveries and cheerleaders, as tempting as that may be. Using balloons and airships for military applications is nothing new. Going back as far as the American Civil War, lighter-than-air vehicles, airships, hot air balloons, and aerostats have performed a variety of missions for the military. During World War I, large military airships dropped bombs and performed surveillance. For a brief period of time in the 1930s, the U.S. actually explored using them as flying aircraft carriers. Unfortunately, those ships were not able to stay consistently aloft and crashed. The planes they carried weren't jets, though. I can't imagine launching F-18s off a blimp. However, today's U.S. forces deploy these floating platforms simply as eyes in the sky in Iraq, Afghanistan, and around the world to perform persistent surveillance. There are two main types of lighter-than-air vehicles used or in deployment for military operations, airships and aerostats. An aerostat is tethered while an airship is free-flying. The most deployed vehicles at the moment are the aerostats, which are often used with unmanned aircraft systems or as a relatively inexpensive replacement to the UAS to provide nonstop coverage of strategic areas. One aerostat program currently seen action in Iraq and Afghanistan is the Army's Persistence Threat Detection System, also known as PTIDS or PTDS, which has been deployed in Iraq and Afghanistan during Operation New Dawn and Operation Enduring Freedom. PTDS is a tethered system which flies like a kite with no propulsion. The system, first deployed by the Army in 2004, is a 74,000 cubic foot envelope full of helium and aerodynamically shaped and always pointed into the wind with fans and a tail system, and it is always buoyant. The maximum altitude is 5,000 feet above ground level. While not easy at first to steer aerostats, they are more rugged than one might think and can launch into heavy winds, while an unmanned aircraft system can't. Even in 70 knot winds in Afghanistan, aerostats were able to hold their position in the mooring station. They are not as vulnerable to enemy attack as one might assume either, as they fly at the upper limit to be vulnerable to small arms fire. Two airship platforms, those are the free-flying ones, remember, in development are the high-altitude airship being developed by Lockheed Martin Mission Systems and Sensors in Akron, Ohio, and the long-endurance multi-intelligence vehicle, also known as the LEM-V, for medium altitudes, being designed by Northrop Grumman engineers in Melbourne, Florida. Lockheed Martin's high-altitude airship, which is being developed for the Army, will act as a surveillance platform, telecommunications relay, or a weather observer. Different electro-optic sensor payloads will be configured for different intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance missions. Once it reaches its location, it can survey a 600-mile diameter and millions of cubic miles of airspace. The airship will also be about 500 feet long and 150 feet high and be airborne for six months or more at a time. It will be launched to an area of interest and parked there and have a sensor communication link capability for deployed troops on the field to get where they want to go. A demonstrator of this Lockheed Martin airship, which is called the High Altitude Long Endurance Demonstrator, or Hale d will fly this summer at an altitude of 60,000 feet and operate for a couple of weeks using small, modest payloads consistent with the demonstration. The other airship, Northrop Grumman's LEM-V program, completed its critical design review six months after signing the agreement with the U.S. Army. Under that agreement, the Army will build three airships with 21-day persistence intelligence surveillance and reconnaissance capability. The LEM-V is longer than a football field, taller than a seven-story building, and uses approximately 3,500 gallons of fuel for the air vehicle to remain aloft for a whole three weeks or 21 days, however you want to term it. The airship will also have hull inflation later this summer. Balloons are becoming a big part of the military surveillance arsenal, but for those of us who can't get it in one of these programs or take a ride in a Goodyear blimp during the World Series, there are still services out there that provide airship rides. I found one called air Ve- Airship Ventures while researching this story. Just go to www.airshipventures.com, that's A-I-R-S-H-I-P-V-E-N-T-U-R-E-S.com, and you can spend your next anniversary sipping champagne in a romantic airship cabin. Not exactly persistence since ISR over Afghanistan, but hey, it looks like fun. 
I'm John McHale, and this is the Avionics Intelligence Report.